Um, hi, I'm a dork. My name is Allie. This is my YouTube channel. Hello, YouTube. And today we're going to do something really different. We're going to do a makeup tutorial. Just kidding. I don't wear makeup, obviously. No, uh, so this is not Lake Michigan. This is a little Airbnb in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's my first time here. We've been here for about two days and I just want to make a really short video because I'm doing some reflecting on what happened yesterday when we were walking around downtown, or I guess they call it uptown here in Charlotte. So it's going to be a story of contrast. <clears throat> and I'm going to make this video really quick. And I just want to give a shout out to, um, we'll just call her by the letter J. She sent me a really sweet um, message the other day, like, are you okay? You haven't made videos. I'm actually getting over walking pneumonia. Bronchitis turned into pneumonia. I didn't like treat myself and I was sick for like a month. It was not fun, but I'm breathing again, which that's amazing. <clears throat> and also I want to give a little hello. Thank you so much to, I'll call him by the letter M, somewhere in Europe, perhaps it's Sweden. But uh, hello to you guys and everybody else who have just been so wonderful to me. And to those who haven't, I uh, say shalom and I uh, hope you are well too. So oh, here, here's the contrast. Okay. Here is number one. Does that look familiar? Mm. Oh, that's all the card says on one side. And then you turn it over and it just says that. Printed in Japan. Isn't that ironic? What the heck? The, the Japanese printing press is sending the U.S. their card? So, okay. So, jw.org and then a QR code for the website. And then we have this. It's a tiny, see how tiny it is? It's a tiny little Bible. And it says, verses of comfort, assurance, and salvation. And you just, like, it's so little you can keep it in your pocket. And... Like, I just turned to page 24. What must I do to be saved? Acts 16.30. Then you can go read the verse for yourself and meditate on that. It's not a whole book of what to believe. So the point is, we're walking through Uptown, and uh, we see this man walking with this sweatshirt that says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it was like a black sweatshirt with neon green letters. And... I think my husband said to him, like your sweatshirt. And I was like, well, like your sweatshirt. And he's like, yeah, praise the Lord. And he just started sharing his witness. And uh, I connected with him within <laughs> a half a second. And um, I said, what's your testimony, brother? And he said, I got saved by the Lord in March 1997. I was in and out of jail 29 times. And then a white 68-year-old... Um, guy came into Walmart and, and shared the gospel with me. And I was like, wow. And he, and he, he went into more detail. His name is Sam. I, I'll try to share like the picture I took with him for like the entry to this video. I don't know if I can do this cause I'm not technologically savvy and I'm not with my computer. So anyway, um, so we're talking and then I shared my testimony with him and how I was a Jehovah's witness and Jesus saved me from that delusion and he was like praise God amen and then he pointed over there he's like they're right there because I didn't see them I was like oh so we did see the Jehovah's Witnesses in the airport um before you get to like the final TSA security line but like well within the airport and I was like wow they were just standing there no one was talking to them and I wanted to talk to them but we were in a rush to like get to our gate like who's actually gonna I don't know I guess if your flight is delayed and you have no one to talk to. So uh, that was my first sighting of a JW cart. <clears throat> and then I saw them across the street in uptown Charlotte. I'm already at five minutes. Okay, I'm going to cut to the chase. Walk across the street, and I had no idea what I was going to say. I had 
nothing planned. I was like, do I identify myself as having been one of Jehovah's Witnesses? I'm like having this internal dialogue. I'm like, well, if I do that, then the, you know, the, the force wall of pr protection is going to come up and the cognitive dissonance will be like, you know, ah, 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 apostate, like don't listen to her and they just will completely like, shut off. So I didn't go down that route because I like to be transparent and honest with people. So I didn't go down that route. So I'm like, oh, what's your message? That Those were just the first words that came out of my mouth. What's your message? And uh, they, I think the theme of the cart was like family. Oh, yeah, family happiness. The guy said, oh, we're, we're talking about family happiness and pointing people to the Bible. And I'm like, you know, I love the Bible. I love reading God's word. So I tried to create like a common ground with them. Um, Cause I know for myself, the years and years and decades and decades that I would go door to door. I never had the um, privilege of being a cart witnesser because I was never that high tier of AJW. I wasn't a pioneer and the carts came out. Well, plus, and I live in a small town. We don't really have a lot of urban opportunities for opportunities for cart witnessing other than the farmer's market, which by the way, is only one block and they have three carts on three corners of this four cornered block. It's like, talk about overkill. So, um, but I know when I was going door to door as a Jehovah's witness for those decades, um, people just didn't talk to me. So, I'm trying to think if someone had said to me, I love the Bible, I love Jesus, how would I have even like responded to that person? I think I would have been a little curious because ultimately that is what ended up happening for me as I knocked on the door of a Christian and he just showed me respect, kindness, and grace and it confused me and I would keep going back. I wrote him down as my little return visit. And in the end, he's the, the Christian who ended up baptizing me in the lake, which is what led to my being announced disassociated because I got baptized into Christ instead of to this organization or that organization. Long story short, I ended up talking to cart number one for about 13 minutes. And I asked them if they were born again because of, I mean, Christian means Christos, which means anointed. And when you're anointed in the Holy Spirit, you, you die to your old self, you're born again. That's what baptism is all about, being born again. And so I was trying to talk about that with them, and it was just like, no, did this just move? Do I have to... Huh. I have this propped up on my rental car. I'm like, how do I talk? So anyway, um, so I talked to cart number one for about 12 minutes, and I just left the conversation. I said, God bless you, and I was just kind of like flat, you know, kind of like when you just have a bowl of oatmeal that has no brown sugar, bananas, or crunchiness. It was just like, meh. but you know, okay. So then we were just walking around and we ran into another cart, like two blocks away. And so I talked to them and I asked them the same question, you know, are you Christian? Are you born again? Oh, and I, and I also asked them for their testimony. I said, oh, well, as, as a Christian, I love hearing other Christians' testimonies. Like, what was your moment um, or moments when you realized that God had called you to be adopted into his family, to be a child of God, like Romans chapter 8, John chapter 3, and, you know, the entire New Testament. And... <clears throat> So cart number two, he was an older Spanish gen gentleman, and he's actually, no, he gave me a different JW card, but it was, again, if you looked at a card like this, would you think, oh, this is about, like, religion, this is about Jesus, this is about God, or I would be like, what is this, like, Office Max? Like, I don't, I don't even get it. Um... So with uh, the second cart, we talked, he, he took me to Revelation 14, 1, because I said, oh, are you born again? He's like, well, some of us are going to heaven. And, and just like for me, what heaven means is being with God. So whether the dimension of heaven is going to be on this planet or somewhere else, like I, I don't really concern myself anymore. This was part of just my process. So like if you're not if you don't think how I think, that's okay. Because I don't even think how I think like three months ago. It's always, 
evolving and changing and growing and I'm always questioning like what do I believe today but I know that the foundation of my beliefs is always Jesus so this camera is like sliding down my car I'm gonna make this quick um I said that five minutes ago Long story short, he took me to Revelation 14.1 and was talking about how literally 144,000 are going to heaven because the scripture says that there's one lamb. And I said, but it's not a literal lamb. Like, Revelation is all about symbols. So if you're not going to take the lamb literally, like Jesus isn't physically in the sky in a lamb body, then how are we to take this number 144,000 and, and all of a sudden just jump to the conclusion that it's literal? So I said to him, I believe that's interpretation. And then he took me to Luke chapter 12. A at least I give that man credit for knowing how to use a Bible because I'm noticing that most Jehovah's Witnesses don't even know how to use their Bibles anymore because they're so addicted to this. Um, so then he took me to Luke 12 where he talked where Jesus was talking to the little flock and I said yeah that's the Jews and the other sheep are the Gentiles anyway long story short that conversation kind of also ended with Meh. and uh and then we were just walking like around the corner and we whoa I'm gonna have to hold this <laughs> we're walking around the corner and we run into a third cart it was three women um, the other carts had men and the men did all the talking. The women like physically like moved into the background. Whoop, I'm going to like crash. And, uh, <clears throat> the men did all the talking. But then when I came upon this third cart, it was three women. And I went up to them and I said the same thing. Are you Christian? They're like, of course. And I said, Oh, can I hear your testimony? And the one sister stepped up to the plate and she said, um, I was unemployed for a number of months and I prayed to God and he gave me peace and he took away my, my anxiety. So that was like ultimately what made, makes her believe that um, it's the truth. I, I, my point in talking to them wasn't to like bash them or argue with them. And the whole time I had this whole internal running dialogue where I'm like, well, okay, at this point, do I tell them about jwfacts.com or do I tell them about the Australian Royal Commission or do I ask them? One card I did say, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses, I've seen you guys in the news recently. Zero curiosity. Like back in my day, if I had been like at someone's door, I would have said, really? What did it say? Because I would have said, well, you should talk to the source. You should talk to a Jehovah's Witness. Don't believe what you see in the media. So I would have wanted to at least have stood up, you know. It was interesting. Um, it's kind of like, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way at all, because I was a Jehovah's Witness for almost four decades of my life. <clears throat> I was a Jehovah's Witness, not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> um, I'll make maybe a video about that sometime. Uh, I was a Jehovah's Witness for nearly four decades, and I liken that to like being at your favorite bar. Like, let, let's call it the, the JW bar. Like, is this about a bar? Uh, and I'm drinking, I love my Kool-Aid. And all my friends hang out at this bar, it's the Cheers bar. And... Imagine someone who is sober, and, and by the way, I was, well, no, I was kind of a depressed drunk. By drunk, I mean, like, watched her who laid. I was like, oh, I was a happy drunk. No, not really. <laughs> um, I was fake, fake happy drunk. And imagine a sober person walks into the bar and tries to show me that I'm, I'm drunk on Kool-Aid. I don't think it works, or if it does work, it's, it's one seed at a time. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's possible to go up to a cart and just share your truth, how you've done research. They're not going to be like, oh, I think I'm drunk. Like, I don't think that's how it works. I just want to make this quick video. I think it's raining. I'm going to go walk to Amelie's Bakery and have a coffee. It's a really cool bakery in town here. Um, super cool town. Lots of art, lots of breweries, lots of bakeries. <laughs> Eating my way through 
Charlotte, North Carolina, and talking to JWs at their carts. Hope you all are well. And um, Google or YouTube the phrase, because this, this man I met, then we ran into him again because we were just walking around downtown and we kind of made a, a loop. We ran into Sam, this uh, guy with the sweatshirt that said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And uh, he said, yeah, just YouTube, Jesus saves guy. And uh, he's just really positive, upbeat, an awesome dude. Okay, bye for now. Shalom. Shalom.